Welcome to Storytime. Sora is back in Twilight Town. A young boy named Vivi brings him to the Sandlot, where Cypher, Fu, and Rai are being attacked by nobodies. Sykes shows up looking for Axel, who has gone AWOL and is considered a full traitor to the organization at this point. You see, Axel's no longer acting in our best interest. Is he with the organization too? Yes. You have a front? Not a very organized organization. He warns Sora that Axel wants to turn him into a Heartless, the implication being that he wants Roxas to re-emerge, though of course Sora wouldn't know that. Sykes tells Sora to keep defeating Heartless and leaves. Hainer, Pence, and Olet find them, explaining that Kairi was captured by Axel. In the course of talking to them, Sora has another Roxas flashback, but he shakes it off and keeps moving. Xemnas and Sykes talk. Sykes confused that Axel is still chasing Roxas. Xemnas insists that it's useless, since he doesn't have a heart so the friendship he felt with Roxas can't be real, and Sykes doesn't question it too much but he's beginning to get suspicious. The group heads to Hollow Bastion since they notice it's not looking so great. Sora runs into Cloud who's looking for a guy named Sephiroth. Quick note, Sora doesn't seem to know who Sephiroth is in Kingdom Hearts 2, which is why I didn't mention their fight in Kingdom Hearts 1, so we're going to consider this the first time he's heard about him. In any case, Cloud is trying to find him because he's the last part of Cloud's darkness that he needs to fight, and Aerith is trying to keep him from running off again. In the end, she agrees that he needs to fight Sephiroth and settle things once and for all. Sora heads to meet Leon and meets the fairies Yuna, Riku, and Pain. They're working for Maleficent for some reason, but they're mostly just concerned with getting treasure. Sora heads into the castle, finding out that the king is here as well. They meet Tifa who's looking for Cloud and apparently hadn't thought about asking Aerith where he is or Aerith decided not to tell her, but in any case she hasn't found him. I'm looking for somebody. Have any of you seen a guy with spiky hair? <laughs> Spikier. Leon's found Ants in the Wise's old computer, hoping to get some more information on the Heartless and Nobodies out of it. Our friend Sitch, who we haven't seen in a while, has made it into this world and has been holed up in the computer room, and when Leon and Sora open the door, he tries to escape. Donald jumps after him and accidentally activates the Master Control Program, which turns Sora, Donald, and Goofy into data and transfers them into the computer itself. Commander Sark finds the group and mistakes them for renegade programs locking them up. There they meet Tron, who explains that they're inside a computer. This system is a copy of one created by a corporation called ENCOM. The original program was destroyed. But this copy was acquired by another user. The new user updated and customized the programs, renaming the system Hollow Bastion OS. He's been locked up by the MCP because it wants to take over the system, and Tron controls access to the full data space. Telling the group that they're special because they're users, he's going to help them get out of the system. In return, they're going to help him regain control of the system, which will give them access to the DTD, the data space with all of Ansem's research. The group makes it out of the computer by the need help to find Ansem's old password. Miggy shows up and helps them figure out that the data space is named after the Door to Darkness, and the passwords are the names of the Princesses of Light, which is kind of creepy, really. Sora heads back into the computer and ends up on the game grid, where Sark forces upon him the most unimaginable punishment, playing video games. After a fun and exciting light bike match, they meet back up with Tron and reach the DTD. Tron gets back his powers, but the MCP takes over the system, which will give him control not only over the computer itself, but to all of Hollow Bastion's defense functions. The MCP questions Tron's illogical loyalty to the users, and Tron doesn't really understand it himself, but Sora claims it is the power of friendship, of course. By the way, this is the first instance we're getting of data people having hearts. It's gonna come up again, so just file that knowledge away for now. Together they defeat the Master Control Program and Tron takes control of the system, making Sora, Donald, and Goofy the new passwords. You, my friends, are the new password. Thanks Tron, take care. You too, and give my best to the users. Everyone heads back out, and Leon for some reason leaves Sora, who has literally never used a computer in his life, to get Ansem's data. But the only thing it gives them is one of Ansem the Wise's selfies. Mickey comes back and tells Sora that the Ansem he thought was an imposter, but he can't quite remember that that imposter was the apprentice Xehanort, because as we've established, Mickey's memory is awful. If he's a fake, then what happened to the real Ansem? Welp, that's just what I'm trying to figure out. Ansem the Wise should know all about Organization 13's plans and what's been happening to the worlds. Suddenly there's an explosion, and running outside they see that the Heartless, led by Maleficent, are at war with the Nobodies. The Heartless aren't doing so well, so Maleficent just turns them on Sora. Yuna, Riku, and Pain decide to switch teams because Donald says Leon has treasure, and they meet Sephiroth, who Sora helpfully directs to go see Cloud. The Heartless swarm Hollow Bastion in frankly pretty ridiculous numbers, and Leon and crew all fight against them in basically one of the greatest montages in video game history. Think you can handle this many? Well, 
Might be tough if one more shows up. Hmm. Then that'll have to be the one I take care of. What? You're fighting too? <laughs> While everyone's distracted with the whole war thing, Zemnis sneaks into the castle and steals the computer's research data. He then goes down to the basement, unlocking the chamber of repose where he kept Aqua's keyblade and armor, and gets to talk to them for the first time in a while. Sora's trying to reach his friends to help him, but he's stopped by Demis, who is still super not stoked to be involved in this whole thing. I bet you can't even fight. Yeah, but we can. You shouldn't judge anyone by appearance. Oh, I told them they were sending the wrong guy. Demix makes the water dance and ruins the day of a bunch of kids who weren't fast enough at Kingdom Hearts' combat system, but in the end he loses and fades away. Rest in peace, Demix. You were too good for this world. Mickey joins them, but as they're leaving, a battle between a heartless and a nobody causes some debris to fall. Goofy, ever the valiant knight, defends his king, taking a mortal wound in the process. His king saved, Goofy dies. Mickey and Donald fly into a rage, charging the Heartless Army, aided by the Final Fantasy crew in the coolest sequence in the game. Oh, by the way, turns out Goofy's totally alive. Sora, Donald, Goofy, and Mickey all charge into battle, Sora fighting off a thousand Heartless on his own. Axel tells Sora that Xemnas set up the war for Sora to defeat a bunch of Heartless so the organization can capture the Hearts. He wants to help Sora with Kyrie, but Saik shows up and he has the bolt. Uh oh. We'll ensure he receives the maximum punishment. Saiz explains that Sora's helping build their Kingdom Hearts. Maleficent takes issue with that because if anyone gets Kingdom Hearts, it's gonna be her. The heart of all kingdoms. The heart of all that lives. A dominion fit to be called Kingdom Hearts must be my dominion! Sora finds himself unable to fight the Heartless knowing that their hearts are being recaptured, so Maleficent sends them away. While they're between worlds, Riku leaves them a picture of the Twilight Town crew with Roxas, along with some sea salt ice cream as a clue that Sora has another half. Sora doesn't want to slay the Heartless anymore, but he has no choice because they're going to continue to hurt people if he doesn't. Until he can figure out what to do about the organization, the only thing left to do is to find Riku and Kairi. A gate opens and he sets off to return to the Land of Dragons. 